This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What up folks, rendering in DaVinci Resolve for YouTube. It's not as complicated as you may think, it's actually quite simple. In this video, I'm gonna run through all of the options, explain a few basic things so that you know exactly what you're doing when it comes to rendering. I'm also gonna show you a quick tip to create presets so you don't need to enter this every single time and another neat trick to upload your videos directly to YouTube from within DaVinci Resolve itself, which can save you even more time. So. Let's not waste any time, let's jump straight into it and I'll show you how. So here we are on the Deliver page. Now, I've got my render settings open on the left. First thing I'm gonna show you, if we scroll over, you can see that there is a built-in YouTube preset. We can give it a click. There's also a drop-down box where you can select the resolution accordingly. Now, this is not too bad, it's better than it used to be, but the downside to this is you don't have control over the quality or the bitrate, which is why most people would recommend that you create a custom export instead, which is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna scroll over to the left and you should see custom export. We're gonna give that a click. Now you need to do some basic things first, like give your render a name. I'm just gonna call this one YouTube and then set the location you want the render to export to. Make sure your render is set to single clip, video, and you've got the export video tick box ticked. And then we're gonna select our format. Now there are two options really that you can use on YouTube. There's MP4 and then there's QuickTime. Either will work, but YouTube actually recommend MP4. I've always used MP4 and I've had really good results. The video you're watching now is MP4, so I generally stick with that. And then we've got Codec. Now you may see either three or two options. We're gonna ignore AV1 because that's limited to the studio version and really high-end GPUs. And we're just gonna talk about 264 and 265. Now either version will work for YouTube. 264 is the older codec. It has worst compression, so we'll give you either larger file sizes or worst image quality compared to 265. But it has the most compatibility. Most systems will be able to run out 264 without any real issues. 265 is the more recent version. It has better compression, meaning better image quality or smaller file sizes. Now, my recommendation is try H.265. If it does anything weird, like you've got massive file sizes or it takes ages to render or whatever, then drop down to H.264 instead. But if you have no issues running H.265, it is the better option of the two. As mentioned, you'll get better looking visuals with smaller file sizes, so stick with 265 as long as it doesn't do anything stupid. So I'm gonna select 265. This encoder option will only appear for those using the studio version and you can simply leave it as auto, or you can choose to have your render done via your graphics card or native, which is your CPU. I'm just gonna leave that as it is for now. And then we have resolution. Now I recommend that you just set the resolution to the same resolution as your timeline. So I'm gonna go with Ultra HD because that's what I edited this video in. If your project is 1080p, just select 1080p, 1440, whatever you want. If you need to do a custom resolution, simply scroll up, click custom, and then enter the numbers manually in the box. Now you could upscale if you wanted to, but I don't think it's essential. So if you've edited at 1080p, you could select 4K from here and it will do a bit of upscaling, which may give you better results on YouTube, but you will of course have bigger file sizes, which means slower uploads and whatever else. So I personally don't think it's essential, just stick with the resolution of your timeline. And then later on, if you do wanna try upscaling, give that a go at another time. Then we've got frame rate. Again, you just want to make sure that this matches the frame rate of your project. It should pull through automatically, so you can't really amend anything there. Then we're gonna scroll down until we see quality. Now there are two options on quality, automatic and then restrict to. Automatic will give you some general presets like least, low, medium, high and best. And then restrict will allow you to actually restrict the bit rate to kilobits per second. If you're fortunate like me, You've got fast internet, loads of storage. I just leave it as automatic and then best. It will give you great results, but it will give you large file sizes. If you need to restrict it, we simply tick the restrict box and then manually enter the bitrate. Now, this is actually quite simple. Don't overcomplicate it. There are a few different rules that you can follow. Casey Farris came up with a really good rule. I've linked to his video down below and it does seem to work. It's maybe actually a bit overkill, but it's a good place to start. If you shot at 1080p, just match your frame rate in your bit rate. Let me show you what I mean. So if we were rendering this project at 1080p, my frame rate is 30, I'm gonna restrict, we'll type in 30,000, we're gonna multiply it by 1,000, and that will give us some really good results. That's actually kind of overkill for 265, 
but it's a good rule of thumb to get you going. If the project was 24, we'd just put 24 or even 25,000 within here. If it was 60, we'd of course just put 60,000. If the project is Ultra HD or 4K, just do the same thing, but double it. So if it was shot at 30 FPS, we'd put 60 within here. If we shot it at 24 or 25, we'd put 50 within here. And that will, as mentioned, give you pretty solid results. My recommendations, try that, do a render, and then open it up on your local machine, don't upload it to YouTube just yet, and see how it looks. If it looks really good, but your file size is massive, then you can just try another quick render, but lower it a bit. Knock it down by five or 10,000 kilobits per second, have a look. If it still looks good and the file size is a bit smaller, awesome. If you've rendered it and it doesn't look very good, then go in here, do the opposite. Increase that by five or 10,000 until you find that quality or that bitrate which works for whichever footage you're using. Fast moving video like gaming video will need a higher bitrate than something like this where I'm just standing talking still. Movement generally causes the most compression artifacts so will need a higher bitrate. But use that rule of thumb and then just tweak it from there. You'll be able to find a sweet spot for you in no time at all. So I'm gonna put 60,000 within there. Now everything else on here, you can actually leave as it is. You can tweak things if you want, but there's really no need. There's no need either to mess with the audio. So I've switched over to this audio tab. The codec will be AAC and the bitrate should be 192. This again will work absolutely fine for YouTube. So once you're happy, you simply click add to the render queue It'll pop it over here on the right hand side and then click render all to render your video. Simple, quick and easy. Talking of quick and easy, here's a quick message from this video sponsor, Squarespace. If you're a photographer, a video editor or a YouTuber, you're probably going to need a website and that's where Squarespace comes in. Squarespace allows you to create an awesome website in no time at all. There's a loads of great templates to choose from that all look great and are easy to customize. There's also built-in analytics, SEO tools, online stores, email marketing, members areas, blogs, and now even scheduling tools. So if you fancy checking out Squarespace for yourself, just head over to squarespace.com right now to start your free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Mr. Alex Tech to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Make sure to use the code Mr. Alex Tech. Simple. Awesome. Now, once that video is rendered, you can then just send it over to YouTube, but you can actually get DaVinci Resolve to do the whole thing for you. Render it out, allow you to preview it, and then automatically upload it to YouTube. It's quick to set up, so let me show you. All we need to do, click on DaVinci Resolve, top left-hand corner, and then go to Preferences. This window will appear. Make sure you're on the System tab, and then come down to Internet Accounts. And you'll have a bunch of internet accounts here. The top one is YouTube, so simply click Sign In. A web browser will open, log in, and then give DaVinci Resolve the permissions it needs, and then simply click Continue. If we hop back into DaVinci Resolve, you can see we're signed in, so simply click Save. Now all we need to do, at the bottom of this list, so we're still on our custom export, we've got all of our settings within here, scroll down, you should see a YouTube settings area. You'll see you've got some YouTube controls within here. So we're going to tick Upload directly to YouTube, and then we give our YouTube video a title. I'm just gonna call this one Test, and then we give it a description as well. We can upload a thumbnail, so I'm gonna give that a tick, and then enter the thumbnail path. So I'll click the three little dots, and then find my thumbnail. Just make sure your thumbnail is under the two megabyte size limit required for YouTube. And then we can select the visibility and the category as required. Now I'm gonna hit add to the render queue. Now before we render this, at the top here, there's these three little dots. If we give that the click, make sure that the option to review before upload is ticked. That will give you opportunity to watch the video back before it's uploaded to YouTube, just to make sure that it's all okay. So with that done, I'm gonna give this a click and then I'm gonna simply hit render. Once that's rendered, you'll see it will say waiting for upload. That's because we've asked it not to upload until we've reviewed it. If we right click, there's an option to open the file location. Your folder will open that contains the video. We can double click on it to watch it back and make sure that it's all okay. If we're happy with it, we just go back to DaVinci Resolve, right click on the job within the render queue, and then we click Upload to YouTube. If we're not happy with it, we obviously just cancel the upload. I'm happy, so I'm gonna click Upload to YouTube. And you can see the option will change to Uploading. If you want to see how long that's gonna take or what's going on, if you click on Workspace at the top, come down to Background Activity and give that a click, you'll get this little box pop open and it will show you all of your upload and downloads. Mine's already finished, so I can't show you that, but you can see all the options within here. 
Now that it's done, it says upload completed. If we right click again, there's an option to reveal in the browser. So I'm gonna give that a click. It's gonna open up my web browser directly to the YouTube video itself. Now it's processing at the moment, so I'm gonna to go to edit video. We're already in YouTube studio. You can see my thumbnail is there, it's ready to go. I can amend any of the stuff within here, hit save and job done. It just saves you the hassle of manually uploading it to YouTube yourself, simple. Now, if you're happy with all of the settings, you can save those as a custom preset. So you don't need to enter them every single time. It's quick, it's easy as always, so let me show you how. So to save all of this as a preset, it's really easy. Just come right at the very top area of these render settings on the left. You've got these three little dots. Give that a click and then you can save as a new preset. I'm gonna call this one 265 4K 30, whatever you wanna call it, just give that a nice little name and then click on OK. Now at the very top of your render settings, if you scroll right to the left, you'll see that preset now exists. So at any time, we can just come along, give it a click, and it'll pull through all of our settings. Now you can make as many of these as you like. If you've got more than one, you get the little drop down, and then you can just select the preset as required. If you need to delete the preset, make sure it's selected, and then click on the three little dots again, and you can delete current preset. If you want to create a new preset based off this one, so let's come in and let's make this one better quality. We can then click the three dots and save as a new preset, or we can save those changes to the current one by simply clicking update current preset. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know down in the comments, give it a like, give it a subscribe if you want to see more, whatever you want to do. Take it easy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.